Um, and, and we can do that. But I won't be able to hear you, but just go ahead and comment if you have any questions. All right, so I just caught everybody up with the handouts. And um, we'll pretty much do the same thing every day, adding on vocabulary. But what we start with is prayer, which we just did. And we will now start with our blessing for learning the Hebrew letters. And you can hand it back to me if you don't want to keep it. Okay. Remember this. Charlotte was um, in my, like, one of my very first Hebrew classes over when we were at the Methodist Church years ago. And that's how we met, and we've been friends. That's one of the things I love about Hebrew, and I think it's awesome. God has brought so many people into my life through a, an interest in Hebrew. So that's what I always am praying for in the back of my heart. So, all right. The bracha, the blessing for learning the otiot, or the letters. So I'll just say it in English. You can say it after me, and eventually, soon enough, you'll be able to say it on your own. Um, again, I just explained that there's a blessing for everything, and so we can acknowledge God. Who has taught my hand to scribe the letters. And then in Hebrew, Baruch, Hamilamed, and you can try and say it after me, Et, Yadi, La Saper, Et, Haotiot. Amen. All right, and then the Modeani is a traditional blessing and prayer. Now, last week I had forgotten to bring my Hebrew Bible. I had forgotten to bring my Siddur, but I did bring those today. I wrote myself a note. As if I don't do that. <laughs> Something else, but I, I guess that, um, let me just put that to the side for just for a minute. But this Modeani is a morning blessing that does come from the Hebrew prayer book. So I'll show you those in a minute. I did give you the write-up on this prayer and its significance and my just my own personal what God, you know, showed me through the scriptures on it. So we'll go to the Mode Ani, which is in here somewhere. There. Mode Ani blessing card upon awakening, it says. So the whole idea, and just in brief summary, would be just taking stock of your self, just like the, the Kohanim, the priests would do. They would look into the labor and the I don't think I handed out anything. Yeah, So um, I don't think I handed out anything new for you, Elizabeth. We were just at the morning blessing part. So um, I was kind of slow today, and I forgot my book at the office. No worries. Um, so at any rate, basically, you're taking stock of yourself in the morning, just like the priests would do. They would look in the mirror or the laver, and they would examine the contents of their hearts. So that's basically what the purpose of this prayer is. And again, you don't necessarily have to say, I, I ascribe to every single word I'm learning in this class. I'm just using some traditional prayers and some biblical um, passages is, as a tool for us to learn the Hebrew. So that's what we'll do. So the Mode Ani reads, no, Leora, 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 honey. Okay, Leora. I know you know what I'm going to say, right? That's one. <laughs> so I'll say it in English. You can say it after me or along with me. I thank you, thank you. Living, and living and eternal king, returning my soul within me, in compassion. Great is your faithfulness. And then in the Hebrew, we'll say it in Hebrew, and then I'll see, we can sing it. Me and Leora can do our little song. So, Mode, 
Ani Lefanecha Melech Chai Vekayam. This one's a little hard. Shehechezarta. Shehechezarta. Be Nishmati. Be Nishmati. Bechemla. Bechemla. Raba. Raba. And Munateka. Sorry, I'm a little slow. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, and then we will sing it. Um, Let's do the fun one first. So it's another wonderful morning, and I'll start it with a song. I will say, Mode Ani, won't you come and sing along? All you need to say is thank you, Hashem. I'm glad that I woke up. It's another wonderful morning, and I'll start it with a song. Ani lefanecha, I'm as thankful as can be. Melech ha'ivakayam, that a king as great as he, shehechazarta binishmati, return my life to me. Um, let's see, and I always mess up the tune, um, because there's all different ones. Modeani lefanecha. Is that it? Melechai lechayam. Shehechazarta bi nishmati bechemla. Rabba emunatecha. Modeani lefanecha. Melechai. All right, and then we go on to Matovu. So, you know, this being the first, it might seem kind of weird. Okay, we haven't even looked at a Hebrew letter yet, but the point is, is that the tunes and such. So Matovu's this one uh, with the yellow highlighting. And that's coming from the book of Numbers. Yeah, I can give you one go look at that. Okay. You gave me this before, yeah. right? Yeah. But uh, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Something to look at. Yep. So uh, we can just say it in English together. Um, this is coming from the mouth of uh, Bill Am, the prophet of the nations, and he was had set out to curse uh, Am Israel, the people of Israel, but God changed the uh, curses into blessings in his mouth, and uh, so this is coming from that. It's, um, yeah, so there's the back. Do you not get that one? I can give you one for sure. Yeah. If you find it, let me know. Otherwise, I got plenty of copies. All right, so in English, it's how goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel. As for me, through the abundance of your kindness, I will enter your house. I will prostrate myself towards your holy sanctuary in awe of you. Adonai, I love the dwelling of your house, even the place where your glory resides. And there are other parts that go with this, but I thought we would stick to these four verses to begin. So it's in Hebrew, we could say it. But you'll get the tune and be able to sing it as well, God willing. So Matovu, Ohalecha, Yaakov, Mishkenoteka, Yisrael, Vaani, Berov, Chazdecha, Avo, Vetecha, Eshtachave, El Hakol, sorry, Kodeshka, Beira Teka, Adonai, Ahavti, 
Ahati. Meon. Meon. Betecha. Betecha. Umakom. Umakom. Mishkan. Mishkan. Kevodecha. Kevodecha. Yeah, us too. Yeah, I think it's a pretty standard. Um, Charlotte mentioned um, in the liturgy for every week, actually, each weekday, but specifically for the Sabbath, it is said. So, uh, Okay, and then um, this sheet we'll use again at the end of class, we end with the Shema, which is something we could talk about more depending on the time we have allowed. So I talked, I had, I wanted to show my art last time. I didn't bring it, did I, when you were at last time, right? Okay, so because the point of me showing you this is to say, I gave you a demonstration about um, the text where Yeshua says, not a jot or tittle will be, or line or stroke, or however you know you want to look at, depending on the translation, shall be removed from the Torah until you know heaven and earth pass. And so I gave you the demonstration of the difference between um, the letter resh in the Hebrew and the letter dalet, and um, I just showed you how the word echad. which means one or unified, um, et cetera. So this word echad ends with the dalet. There's a word acher. It's spelled exactly the same in the Hebrew, but instead it ends with this letter resh, which actually means another or inferior. So when we read the Shema, for example, that text that Yeshua quoted, and he said, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, this little overhang here is the only thing that's separating the word Akkad from being the word Acher. So the only thing that I really wanted to, yes, I'm just reviewing real quick because it ties into what I was going to do. That's two, because you didn't raise your hands, and I need you to get used to being respectful like that to all your teachers. So anyway, the only difference between, we need to be careful, is basically, with the way that we do these little overhangs, we need to make sure they're there. Otherwise, Yeshua would have been teaching, God forbid, that the Lord our God, the Lord is, God forbid, another. Because if you don't have that, then it, um, you know, it's important, the little overhangs. However, that being said, you can go back and review the teaching. I didn't want to like do it all over again. But that being said, um, there's all different kinds of script, so you'll see like this one on your on your matovu is a lot more crisp. Um, yeah, this is more boxy. That's one style. Um, but the one on the other page, this is the one that I like. It's it's prettier. It's got more curvature. And I like that better um, for me personally. You may like it more um, uniform. The whole point of all of that is to say that you should make the Hebrew your own, though. You should get comfortable with it. You should make it beautiful. And um, you can do all kinds of things with the Hebrew. So I brought some of my art to show how you can get it creative with it. So the letter Tav in the Hebrew is 
and obviously you won't be like doing that when you're writing a note to somebody or practicing, you know, writing your scripture, but this is the letter Tav. Tav in an ancient picture language was the sign of a, a, a cross, and it refers to covenant. So I actually have in here um, some different Hebrew words in blood, and it was supposed to be like the, the Passover when the Israelites would mark their doorposts with the blood. That's just one example. Um, I don't know, I don't need to show all these. Let's see another real cool one. And I'm just showing you, I, I did some for a while. Actually, one of my first classes, my friend got me a, a, a fountain pen. Like it was like a legit old school. And I started messing with the India ink. Um, so, you know, that's fun to do too. You could turn it, this is a scripture I just wrote out in the Hebrew of when Moshe, when Moses took the handful of soot and threw it heavenward and it became lice. Uh, but, well, it was, was it lice? <laughs> Dust over the entire land erupting into boils and blisters. Um, so that's just another little example. This one's about a well. This one is, um, a serpent, um, Nakash is a serpent, and uh, Mate is staff. So I have him, if you remember the section of text when Moses' is, well, actually, it was our own staff turned into a serpent. Um, so, anyway, just some fun with Hebrew. This is face to face, Panim al Panim. And that's in the Hebrew. So anyway, the reason I'm showing you all this is to say you can get artistic with it and you can make it your own. The only thing that really matters are just these little things um, that are important. Because it one letter, or in this in this case, case, that one little overhang can change the whole meaning of the whole uh, passage you're in. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. Um, I'll left that chart, look alike, and Hebrew. So we're doing great on time. Let's go ahead and actually just start looking at our Hebrew letters. And I like to do them on the board, and you should try and draw them after me. Are you bored of Hebrew yet, Leah? No? She did all this yesterday. All right, let me see. I'll put the board a little closer. Maybe... So we shall. If you give me a pen piece of paper, I can mess with you. Yeah, you want to draw something? I don't know if I have any blank. Draw me. Thursday, um, and I can kind of gauge where we're at. We're already learning vowels with them. They don't know all the letters yet, but we learned a couple vowels already, and that's encouraging to me. So if we keep moving along, we'll get to the point where, you know, maybe we go further, and I'm here at your service. So however long you have an interest, I will do it with you. I am here to, to serve you. All right, so I'm gonna take this one out or and or the other one because I like the little tricks that one gives you, kind of like mental tricks to uh, to memorize the letters. Yes, that's the one. Let me see if I can find my other here. Um, let me give these over. Elizabeth and Charlotte. Charlotte already knows them, but. Charlotte already knows them. Yeah, and she's been learning, learning like crazy. So let's start with Aleph. And I'm going to show you how I do it. I'll do it in uh, several different scripts, probably just so you can see what things bother me and why I do things the way that I do. Hard to see that. 
better. Okay, so you want to have one diagonal. Can you see it okay, Pastor Rick? Okay. Um, so you want to do your diagonal line. One line coming like that, one line coming like this. This is letter Aleph. Uh, don't get confused if you see it transliterated as like this. It doesn't make a difference. There's no standard, unfortunately there should be, I think, it would make it a lot easier. There's no standard form of transliterating. There's many. So I just write it the way that makes sense to me. And I'll try to be consistent, but I'm not always consistent. So that's all up. Let's do that again. I'll do it a little different way. Instead of being curvy, I'm going to make it a little straighter. This is all up. And the main thing with Aleph is there needs to be a space in between here. It's not an X, you know? So that's Aleph. Aleph, without any vowels, is a silent letter. So when I ask you what sound does Aleph make, you will tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let's go on to the next Hebrew letter. Tell me if I need to slow down or ask me anything you, you know me. Uh, so bait or bet, we'll start with a line up top, line going down. Your bottom stroke needs to match up with your top one, but it does need to have an overhang over here. It can be real long, it can be real short, it just needs to have it. I usually go something like this and try and make sure I'm lined up. That's the dot here, which will make it be the letter bait or bet. Um, and this Hebrew letter makes a B sound, B. Okay. I'm going to do another one to show you a little different way. Okay. This dot has to be here. The ball in its belly is what makes it bet. Okay. Otherwise, this letter has the exact same shape without that ball, and it makes a V sound, and it is letter vet. So let's do that again. And we're going to go like or this. Vape. Vate or vet, yes. And it makes a V sound, like in a V. There's a vacuum. There's no ball. It's a vacuum here, so it makes the V sound. Okay, this is vet or vate, and it makes the V sound. V. All right. Okay, let's do another one. Letter, sorry, this thing's moving. I'm trying to lock it. Yeah, I can get it. You want to try? It's not working out for me. Alright, so this is letter Gimbal. So, is that it? Cool. That works. Just the two. It's probably fine, baby. Thank you. That is very sloppy. Gimbal. Gimbal. And Gimbal makes a G sound like G. Alright, let's try another Gimbal. I like to do the diagonal, going down, but not all the way down. I need to make also two legs for him. Gim out. So I'm going to try and copy this one. Again, I'm just showing you the way that makes most sense to me and that I have found comfort in. But I'm going to show you this guy too. So that went down like that and like that. That's another way to do it. Block printing. So Gim out. All right, so let's do a few more and then we'll go through them. This next one is Dalet. Dalet. This is, makes a D sound, D, Dalet. All right, I'm trying to see if there's any tricks I might have missed. Dalet dents in. That's a trick. Let's do that again. Dalet. 
So I will show you in the Hebrew Bible, sometimes this overhang is very, very, very small. It just needs to be there, okay? About that. And sometimes this top stroke is not quite as long. This is the general shape of Belvet, okay? Belvet makes a d sound. Belvet. Now let's do one more, and then we'll go through all of these and erase and keep going. The next letter is hey. but we need to do a little stroke over here. Um, the main thing with hay, let me erase the erases, is that it needs to have this little window. Sometimes that little window will be very little. It's in here, whole. So whole sounds like H, hay. So yeah, you can see in the block print, the window's pretty small, that hole there. Hey, look at me through the window. Don't forget the window. Okay, so hey, sorry, it's kind of slanty from the angle on that, but it should be straight. Let me do a little better. Straight down. That's a great question. We'll ask him, we can ask him someday, huh? script he likes the best? Mm -hmm. Probably magnificent. All right, hey, let's, yeah, we'll stop there for a minute because the next one can be a vowel. All right, so let's, I'm going to have you say it with me. It makes which sound? No, sir. <laughs> Good job. The next letter is bait. And it makes b. You gotta make that too. I know you know how to make that, but then we have vate. Makes v. We have gimel. And g. So we have dalet. And d. And we have letter hey. All right, um, I am going to erase these. Practice writing them. It's the homework. All of the Hebrew letters should be practiced for next time so that we can get further and further. I'm going to introduce you to a, another letter now, the letter Vav. Vav can be a consonant. Vav can also be a vowel, and it makes two types of sounds. One it is a vowel. Vav is also a word, which means and. Um, the letter He, I should have mentioned, is also the word the. I'm going to go back to He real quick. He is also the word the. It's a definite article. Okay? So you'll hear it all the time. Hamashiach, the Messiah. Uh, Hashabbat, the, sh the Sabbath. Um, so He is, is a word in and of itself. Now we're going to move on to... Master of all kings. He's got the olive on him. That's awesome. How cute is that? I love it. It's beautiful. All right, so here's Vav. Vav is a hook, a nail, it's a joiner. Um, so Vav, when it's a consonant, it makes the V sound. And I'll show you it in its vowel forms in a minute. Um, so Vav can also be the word and. You will see it a lot. Okay? When Bob is a vowel, the re I'll show you it now because it's important. Okay, so when I teach the kids, and it's always helped me, Bob is a vowel as, and you have this dot, and it's either going to be on top or in its belly. So I picture this basketball player. And if he wants the ball, he's saying, oh, 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 over here, over here, oh. So this vav with the dot or the ball on top is going to be making an o oh sound as a vowel. Um, when it is, you're playing basketball, someone 
passes the ball a little too hard to your belly, it's ooh. Okay, so that's how I remember that. Ooh. Okay, so it's a U type vowel. So this is like an L vowel, and this is a U vowel. Okay, so we have Bob as a vowel and Bob as a consonant. Um, and I'll tell you how the vowels work soon, as soon as we go through the letters a few more times. All right, so we have hey, vav, and now we have Zion. So for Zion, it just looks like a little axe to me. Zion. Go ahead and say it with me now. Zion. Zion's. Like the Z sound, okay? So um, you may see him a lot smaller of a stroke on top. I like him in the, the scriptier way because he does look a lot more like an ax when he's colored in. But this is Zion. Zion. Okay. Next letter is letter Chet. And yes, you can, the kids love the phlegm me letters in school. They just really like to make that sound loudly. So we have chet. So you do, it's not chet like chi, you know the ch in English. It's chet. Okay. So I'll put ch, but just know it's not ch, it's ch. Okay. So this is letter chet. Um, you may see it a little curvier. If you're doing like a newspaper in modern, it'll look even more like boxy. I prefer this one or something like this. You get used to what works for you, but this is chet. The main thing with chet is it's just these two lines, it's closed, and it's two, these two lines down. Uh, it won't have a window like, hey, it won't have an overhang like Dalit necessarily, and it won't have a stroke on the bottom like Tav. And you'll know what I mean when we get there. So Chet. It does have to have these two lines, and it needs to be closed. All right, Chet. The next one is Tet. I like to start from the middle. I like to go straight, and then I make a like a bowl. Okay, this is Tet. And it does make a T sound. So you could say, oh, nobody said chet with me. Chet. Chet <laughs> says ch. That's good. And then tet. Go ahead and say that with me. Tet. Makes a T sound. Um, let me think of it. Let's see if I can find. So this one's very boxy. So this one starts from the middle, it's going down, it's going square and up. Same general shape, you can do that as well. Whichever one you prefer. Tet. Then we have the smallest Hebrew letter, which is letter Yod or Yud. And it does just make a Y sound. Okay? It is small. You can see it like this. It should be easily recognizable because of the, the large size difference. So that one's always, that was one of the first ones I could recognize. Um, then we have another letter which will, its pronunciation will depend upon its, um, the dot, whether it's there or not. So let me just show you this letter. And then I'll do it with the dot and without the dot, okay? All right, so if it has the dot, it's going to make, which this dot is called Dagesh, okay? This is letter Ka, with a harder K sound. Because that ball is right in our throat and we can't get the phlegm out, so it's K, Ka, instead of Ha, wherein the phlegm is free, free to fly. Why is it called phlegm? I, that's what I call it, but it's really not phlegm necessarily. 
we'll talk about the guttural, the labial, and different types of sounds. My pronunciation is, is a lot wanting on the things that I haven't memorized, so I'm, I'm working on that. So we have ka, do you want to say that with me? Ka. And it's k. And then we have kha, which also makes that sound. Um, I have the kids ask, why is there two when there's others? Why is there two letters that make the same sound? I don't know why, but I do. And how, do, how are we supposed to know which one is which? Well, it's only through memorization. So you just really will only, just like some things in English, you just have to memorize certain things um, to know how they're spelled. So that's the same idea. So we have... Oh, cat and cat. That's more like rhyming. That's a little different. So, so we have hey, vav. We have vav as a vowel in two different forms. Zion. We have chet, tet, yod, kaf, and chaf. And um, I wanted to tell you that there are five Hebrew letters. When found at the end of a word, not just a sentence, but each word, they will change their shape. They will not change their pronunciation or the meaning of the letter or the meaning of the word. It was just simply indicating that the word has ended and it's called a final letter or a sofit letter. So feet, ending, or uh, final letters. Okay, one of these is um, kaf. Okay, so when kaf or kaf is found at the end of the word, you're going to write it the same. You're going to begin. You see how I began the same? But instead of going this way, I'm just going to extend it down further. Okay, so this is um, final chaf. Okay, so just bear with me on those. None of the Hebrew letters will go significantly below the line, line, um, except for, and depending on the script, I've seen people do lamed go underneath a little bit, kof, um, and these final, these final letters. Okay, and we'll talk about that more as we get a little uh, more strict with our uh, writing. Okay, so let's go on to the next few letters. Mm -hmm. Are we going to play the all skip probably this time? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We'll see. I'm thinking probably not. I'm a little shy about that song. Hey. Now I like it. It's just, it's funny. It's a fun. Well, we can do it. We will do it, but maybe not today. All right, we were at the letter Lamed. And that is where we are now. Lamed. And I'm going to try and do it as it's shown here. A little line. A line going this way. And then, then we have it going straight down like this. It almost looks like a seven. This is letter Lamed. If you want to say that with me, Lamed, and then it makes an O sound, like the letter L, okay? I do it more like this. I go like this. I have a curve and a little line down here. Um, the main idea, is sometimes you won't see that top stroke at all. It'll just be like that, you know? So I prefer to have this little line, and I like to have the bottom line because sometimes that can look a lot like and we don't want to get confused. So there's reasons I do my little extra things. And I just wanted to show you that. So we have Lamed. And now we're going to move on to Mem. This is one of my favorite letters. I'm making a mountain and I want to make sure there's a foot of the mountain and there's a little mountain climber. This is Mem. Do you want to say mam with me? Mam. And it's mm, like an M. Um, let's see how to say it. Um, on this sheet, it's a lot sharper. Okay, however you prefer. I like mine curvier, and I love the beautiful 
Yeah, the scriptier one. So, yeah, can get really pretty. Mem. Um, mem is another letter which has a final form or a suffix. Final mem is going to be enclosed. It's not going to, this is, it, it will be unlike the other final forms in that nothing will end up below the line. All we're doing basically is closing this here. I'm gonna see how they did this one. All right, so we'll do the top stroke down. I like to make sure there's some right angles down here so it doesn't get confused with samet, which looks like this. Okay, so you can see there are reasons to do the little tricks I'm giving you, but try and make those those edges pointy. It can get even boxier, okay? But basically, it's enclosed. Um, how does final map? Yeah, you can see on the on the sheet that one's very, very square. All right, so that's mem. Let's go on to noon. Um, noon. So you can see in this picture, I don't like this at all. This would look so much if I'm reading the Hebrew Bible. They have these two lined up um, for the letter noon. Um, I would easily confuse that with a cough uh, or maybe even a, a bet. That's why I like to, with noon, do the little diagonal. I like to then do my stroke, and I like to make sure that this stroke goes out further than that top line. Okay. So your noon here, that would confuse me a lot if I'm reading, so that's why I don't do mine like that. The noon on this page is a lot more to me. Um, stroke is, uh, is uh, longer than the top one. So this is noon, noon. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it makes that mm sound like N. Yeah, you are at two. Do you mind adding me some water later? You? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It looks like Gimel. So yeah, that's that's actually one of its look-alike letters, but uh, Gimel has those two little feet. All right. Not in the noon. Samet is next. Um, how about let's see Samet. So I'm going to do Samek. I like to do this, and I like to make it round. Samek. Samek makes an S sound. So you can say Samek with me. Samek. And let's see how they did it over here. This one has it more like that. Basically, it's enclosed. It's uh, the only Hebrew letter that is shaped rounded like that. Other than your final mem, right? Mm -hmm. They do look very similar. Thank you, love. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's stomach. Okay, let's do iron. This one is uh, this one is body here. I've always given me a little trouble. Yes, yes, yes. Stomach. All right, let's do iron. Iron is another silent letter. Um, how's this one showing? Okay, so yeah, this one's actually doing, level? yeah, I will show them that. So you have like that, and you have this. You want to have a little gap there. Some of your, you'll see sometimes the uh, font will not, but I like to make sure that that's there. Okay, so something like this, and then your next stroke coming down like this is ion, and ion is a silent letter without its vowels. It'll take on the sound of any of it, whichever vowel it that takes. That looks like a J. <clears throat> You're right. You're right. That's what you meant, right? Yeah, I thought that looks like a J. Okay, Ian also, she wanted, this is what I always have done. Ian actually means eyes. So I like to uh, illustrate it like this. Okay, so I am means eyes. <laughs> the lips too. There. Good? Nose? 
<laughs> All right. Uh, pet. Pet is the next letter. Um, I like to start from the interior here. This is actually the interior going up. Now I finish it with this last stroke. Okay, this is pet. If you want to say pet with me, pet, okay. and then make the P sound. Um, let's see, how's the blocky one? The blocky one just has it in one stroke. Okay. Is there a dot in one of them? It, uh, certain letters can take the dot. It will change their sound. It may double their sound, uh, shorten their sound. That's what the Daugish does. That's that dot, but we'll learn about him when we're doing, when we're really desiring for more grammar. Um, which we aren't there yet. Okay, so we have pet. And another thing I like to do with pet is show you that pet means mouth. And so I always illustrate it like this. Let me see if I can find my priest real quick. My Kohan. Kohan. I put uh, the, the scripture from Malachi. I actually named my son because it's one of my favorite scriptures. The peh or the mouth of the priest should safeguard the Torah. So you've got the Torah in his peh. Alrighty. Um, so I'm a guy in peh. Let's see. So, pet, you know what? I kind of actually forgot something important. Were you trying to tell me this, Leora? You were. Mm -hmm. This is what she was trying to tell me. Pet has to have that P stuck in his mouth. Pet has to have the P. Otherwise, he's fet. And he makes an F sound instead. So, thank you, Leora. I was not paying attention to what you were trying to remind me. So, you have pet or fet. Okay, and yeah, thank you, Leora. Sorry I missed it when it was important. All right, so fe, let's do the, all right. This is another a letter which will have a final form. So final or so sweet form. Fe or fe. Basically, all we're going to do when we're drawing our final form of pet or fe is we're going to take our bottom stroke once again and just kind of stretch them out. So let's start with our nose. And instead of going this way, I'm just going to keep going down. And which one is this? Is this fe or that's, pe? That's the. You got yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. And um, same thing with pe. So again, instead of turning that way, I'm just going to keep, keep going down, and this is final path. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I think I'm correct. Yeah. Um, great. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Walk around. No, it's not going to be warm, and no, you can't do that. If you want to go to the playground, you'll have to walk through the church, and uh, I'm okay with you being back there because it's fenced in. That's up to you, but you remember the door locks behind, you know, you remember that door locks? Yeah, I know. So you have to put something there. I don't so the finals change their shape, do they change any sounds, or are they... No. It just change shape. Yes. Yep. And it doesn't change the meaning of because you know each Hebrew letter has a corresponding meaning as well. What's that? What if that door is locked? Which door? The church door shouldn't be. And you could just say hi to the young lady out there in peace. For some reason, you accidentally locked yourself, and then you can just knock on the door, and she'll know that it's you. That's up to you. It's your your choice. Is that because we have run-on words and then you know that's in the one word? That is, so like, what do you mean by like, I just wonder why, you know, I mean, why? Like, I was, you didn't create a long time ago. Yeah. They decided to have the endings have 
I mean, you know, in English, we don't change the ending. We just maybe vowel sounds, you know, for the E at the end, but we don't change the end. So that's why I was wondering how it evolved that way. Yeah, that's a good question. What I think it is, is because when you look in, for example, say like a piece of text from an old scroll, which wouldn't even have the vowels, the letters just run right together. Yeah. There are like no spaces at all. So I think that's why to you know show you the ends. Yeah, exactly. And because there's no punctuation, there's no capitalization. Um, so I think that that would be the answer to that. I'm pretty sure. Which would, like so so what I want to do now is just kind of pass this around so you can see um, sometimes how and we haven't gotten quite through the whole Aleph bet, but you can kind of see how how um, it looks. In the text, you can maybe just kind of pick out the final, you can see how little, just want you to take a look and see how some of the final letters, they'll go down further, but it's sometimes real hard to see. Um, so just take a look, just kind of like examine it just for a little, and you can see it could be challenging. Um, so I'm trying to give you little tricks as to how to recognize the letters. And again, different fonts will be easier to read. That's beautiful script. Uh, to me, it's easier to read that one. Um, but I could give you some examples. I want to actually do with the run running the words running together. Okay. Okay. And we can go on with our letters. And then I want to talk about something else because we've been doing this a little while. We've shift a little bit. Um, so where were we? Tell me where we were. We just did pe and fe, right? Yep. Okay. And so we did the final, the final. The final form. Okay. okay, so we'll go ahead and go on to Zadi. Um, so I make him like this, like that, and like that. Zadi. And it's spelled completely different over here, Zadi. And it makes an, a TS sound, like, like in the English word rats. Okay, so that's sadi. You cold? It's like, I think I have it at like 83. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sadi has a fan final form. All right, so we have final sadi. Final or, or sadi sofit. Uh, this was always tricky for me. Let me see what the block one does. Charlotte remembers. <laughs> I've never liked this one. It's not its fault, it's mine. So this is final sadi. Okay. So basically, I mean, I guess what messes me up is that it's not just stretching it down. So it, it, that's a little bit different. Um, let me see the other one. This one's prettier. So I guess for final thoughty, it might help me and it might help you just to do a straight line and a little stroke like that. And maybe someday I'll get used to him. So thoughty. But you can see the line would be somewhere around there and uh, we're just stretching him down. And yeah, and so now you can kind of see maybe that sheet that I gave you about the recognizing the letters and color coding it. That's, that's good, gonna be a good practice for you. All right, let's go to Kof. All right. So he goes like that. He may go under the line, but not very far. And this is Kof. Kof with a hard K sound. So you can see on the one sheet, it is a lot boxier. Maybe not quite that boxy, pointy. Where's Cope over here? It's really super pretty. Sort of looks like a thing in that one. So this is Cope. And the next Hebrew letter is, if you're, if, I'm not um, using that. If you want it, do you want my jacket? Are you going outside? Because if you are, you should bring my jacket. Will you grab my scarf from the car? Or no, wait, I have it in here. How about the scarf? Like, cold. Okay, well, whatever. If you get too cold, you come on back. I love you. 
remember about the door, and you should say hi to her just so she knows you're there and you don't freak her out too. Mm -hmm. Cleaning the bathroom, some little girl walks. about that this is what I mean when I say um, there are I don't know about hundreds but there are many different ways of transliterating so um, that means so if it, it, the, the actual letter is written the same way yes the Hebrew that, letter is absolutely yes yeah. just the English like we're trying to make it Makes sense in English. Sure. So this translator, uh, transliterator, I found Q O F to me. It, I, I prefer this because K, if it does make that K sound, I mean, a Q kind of makes a little bit of a different sound. So to me, it doesn't quite match up, but that's just me. And you'll see it bunches of different ways. And I can't help you because there is no standard. Well, way. It, still has the, it still has the F sound. It just yeah. didn't, like you said, but it's. It's softer as a Q instead sure. of very pronounced as right. a K. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's how I understand it to be. <laughs> Harder K sound. What's that? Is a board. Is a board in the back. And I need to help it up in this room for you. Um, all right. Resh. You can roll your R's if you can. Resh. Resh. Is it a rolled R? It's like a slightly rolled R. <laughs> it's like in Spanish. It is. It's a roll, you roll the R. Resh. Resh. Uh, if you can't, you know, yeah, if you can't um, roll your R at all, that's okay. It can just be Resh. <laughs> but if you're uh, hearing Israeli speak, it'll be rolled slightly, at least slightly. So we have Resh. Yeah, and we'll talk about um, I think that too. Labials, um, gutturals, and the other letters which we can attach to parts of our mouth in order to make them sound more appropriate. But I, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much an amateur when it comes to excellent pronunciation. So, Sadik Kof Rish. Shin and Sin. Okay, I'm going to show you them both. So curve like that. This arm here. Curve like this. This arm here. It's not a W, so make sure to differentiate. Um, first Hebrew class ever. A wonderful student taught me the trick that would always help me recognize the two. We have Shin. And we have sin. Shin makes an SH sound. Sin makes this S sound. And she helped me to put the dot here for sin because sin is never right. This dot will always be on the left. Sin is never right. And then shin has the dot there on the right. I did mention last class, just like you can see that the Hebrew books open and are read from right to left. Hebrew is also written from right to left, which is why you see me do this. Find it important to emphasize this little toe on top. Similar, and sometimes that little overhang will be very small. That's the only way to differentiate between Tav and Chet. So, and Tav will make a T sound. Okay, so we have gone through the 
on a bet. Um, but I do want you to practice writing them. And I do have a few. Yeah. Who knows? I get this one. Elizabeth, you didn't get this one. So yeah, do this. This is basically for practice. And I did some of the reason I chose these is because they're look-alike letters. So you can go through here and kind of color code and practice recognizing. Use thin markers or use colored pencils or if you have pens, whatever you have. But that would just be a good practice. Um, okay. So what we could do is let's do the look-alike letters. And then I wanted to address, since Elizabeth is here now, um, and it applies to the mode ani, we're going to learn that we are learning. We'll do that. So let's do the look-alike letters together. There is a sheet for those. Let me see if I can hold it up here. You can see it, honey, what you doing? You just need more space? Okay. Yes, that's it. It's labeled Hebrew consonants. See right now, Elizabeth. All right, so this will be, uh, you know, this is important, and this will help with that that little exercise. Um. All right, let's do a look like letters. Is it moving you? <laughs> okay. I'm ready. So, a discerning between easily confused letters. Um, let's just start from I. They may not look very similar to you, but that's why I think this this script is good to see. They have these little crowns or these little flames on the top of certain Hebrew letters. You will see that in the the, the Tanakh there. It's just not as pronounced as this handout is. But you can see how close they look. The main thing to note is um, Okay, that, that makes sense. All right, so this is Ian, and this is Sadi. 